Are you interested in new heroes, a pro mode, better clan discovery, or receiving more ores? Watch this video. We're going to break down the Inside the Builder Hut episode from Clash of Clans where the devs reveal everything. In case you're not aware, yesterday Clash of Clans released a really cool video. Unfortunately, it is 26 minutes, so it's quite long. So today, we're going to break down all the important parts of Inside the Builder Hut. It's essentially Ferry, the community manager, talking with one of the game devs, and they go over all of the important issues. And today, I've clipped each part of it, and we're going to listen to the important parts. So the first topic here is progression. Obviously, it takes forever for, to get from Town Hall 1 to Town Hall 16. It is a problem across the game. Let's see what Vesa, the game designer, has to say about it. Uh, I won't pause it too much unless I feel like I can add something of value, but, you know, we all doubt that anyway. Let's go. What, what really I believe is needed is more of like a structural change and how that progression works. Uh, instead of having this exponential growth where eventually you get stuck in these week-long timers, we have more of like a steady... Uh, steady optimal pace where you're just having fun you have different timers some short some longer mm. you're having a good time uh, and the game flows <laughs> much more face. nicely in that way so that is like a, a big big thing that we think has a, has a long-term impact that's quite vague uh, I wish it was a bit more specific, but it is, it's good to know that they know it's a problem. I think it's interesting because Clash of Clans is obviously, you know, a, I don't know exactly the name for the game, but you obviously build throughout the town halls. Whereas you look at like, say, Fortnite, if someone started playing Fortnite in 2017 versus 2022, they're all still playing on the same build. Whereas in Clash of Clans, someone starts 2022, they'll be, you know, town hall 9, town hall 10, maybe town hall 11, and the guy in 2017 is town hall uh, 12, 13, so they're not playing on the same build. So I often thought the best way to fix it would be to just, you know, have everyone sort of at the t same town hall level. You release content for a year, then it resets, kind of like other video games, but maybe people hate that. I just... It would, it would allow new players to come in a whole lot better, but let's uh, uh, let's go so back just to here. Straight, on that, but in a different way. Well, we've already done earlier this year, uh, we did cuts on, on the earlier mm -hmm. uh, town halls, up to town hall nine, and we saw some very positive changes there. And we wanna expand this same direction to all town halls. So eventually, like, it's a, it's a steady process where we're trying to find the optimal balance, but eventually it should, should feel better for all. So that both like free to play players and paying players are just have a, gonna have an overall better experience going through that. And the goal- There you go. So they do wanna make it better for everyone, but like, don't get me wrong, I love that they do these cuts, and I'm sure a lot of you lower Town Hall players do as well, but they do these cuts all the time, and it still takes forever to get from Town Hall 1 to Town Hall 16. So either they're going to have to make, you know, some insane upgrades just so short it's ridiculous, or they have to do something to, to change it, in my opinion. But it's good to hear uh, Vesa talk about it. The goal is not for, like, the game to take more and more years as we mm -hmm. add more content like everybody Thank should be you. able to get to the the new part and feel like they're part of a living game perfect all right there you go and you can already see what the next topic is using heroes while upgrading when you're upgrading your heroes you can't use them and uh like some apt redditors put it you need to do wars in order to get stuff but you can't do wars because you don't have heroes thus you don't get stuff so thus you don't you know and that goes on <laughs> this is a huge issue mm -hmm. i see it as an, like an absolutely like a, a this is an understatement that it's a huge issue it's i love the fact that they brought in hero equipment and more clans are doing wars now but it also just you you can't get the ores if you can't go in war and you're useless in war without heroes brutal crunching problem and it is one of the the first things that we saw and i saw as i joined the team like like this cannot continue and if the game was designed today i, I find it very difficult that anybody would would mm -hmm. suggest such a such That's a design cool. in this modern world however uh interesting to note they would not have done it this way if it was released today so even they know it's terrible but you're going to see what he talks about here is really interesting. I might let this play for 70 or 80 seconds now. I'll open up a little bit of the, the brutalities of being a game designer. So why this is the hardest problem that a game designer can, can ever face is because there is a, a price tag to it. Yeah. And that price tag is very concrete and it is counted in the millions where I, <laughs> I can't <laughs> guarantee with my own pocket change <laughs> whether, <laughs> whether that's going to work. So. 
So sorry, I said I wouldn't pause it, but them laughing about millions and here, here, I'm, I am uni student in debt. Yeah, that's that's so much fun. Yes, I'll try removing. It comes with this financial risk that uh, I'll have to be able to. What's the word? Uh, <laughs> justify. Justify. That's the, the word. Change. Yeah. Um, that is so the I problem. I have to have a design which is at least as good and hopefully better, obviously. Mm -hmm. So. This brings us to the big changes in December and equipment. And our hope was that if we diversify our monetization, we bring in these new ways that people can interact with this system. Maybe we can put, pull off the pressure from that hero book monetization that has been quite su successful so far. So, and then it allows us the avenues to fix that fundamental gameplay problem that is making people have a bad time. Um, so that's where the motiva motivation for that is coming. And we're looking into like a multitude of, of ways to fix that. Uh, like more heroes is, is definitely something that is up uh, or not. Did you like, hear that? I heard that. More heroes. Now, this is something I talked about in a Reddit post a few months ago that they did uh, where they did a Q&A session. And one of the things they suggested was more heroes, but not that you can use more. So you'd be able to use a maximum of four in a battle. But why that would be so good for this is you could upgrade a hero, but then use, say you had five heroes, you could upgrade one of your heroes and use the other four in battle. So you'd be able to upgrade your heroes, but not you'd have to forego, you know, that hero for the battle, but you could replace it with another. But he said, he didn't say an extra hero. He said, more heroes. I want to hear more. High, high priority on that. <laughs> yeah. po oh. A list of possible fixes to that issue. But it also depends on how the hero equipment changes going, what kind of balance we find, what kind of success we find, all of that stuff. Okay. And I, I guess since we're talking about hero equipment... Okay. I kind of like that. I don't know what they would bring for more heroes because the, the heroes we've got at the moment really encompass all the different things. So I'll be interested to see what they bring to the game. But yeah, I'd love more heroes, but you could still only use four on a battle. I think that's a really good concept. But um, the ore economy in and of itself is still in its infancy. All right, well, that doesn't help you, uh, <laughs> the players. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to fix it. So we're going to give a bunch of new ores. Uh, we're going to add them to the raid metal shop. We're going to add them. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of new events. We're going to uh, make the 4x star bonus also affect ores. So that was maybe an oversight on our part to begin <laughs> with. But we're going to add those in and see where that goes. And we're following constantly how people are upgrading those things. Like where are you? Where is the majority of players as far as, uh, as it comes to like finished equipment yeah. and how far? That's the thing that we don't really understand as much. Sorry to pause it right now, but Clash has so much data. They have so much data. I'd love to work uh, rifling through all the data that they get because it'd be amazing to see, you know, how many are at each town hall? What's the average level at equipment per town hall? How much, you know, average equipment, how much average ore, sorry, are they getting per day? They have all of the data they need and, you know, they're a pretty successful company. They, they, for the most part, will know what they're doing with all this data. Um, we're gonna also think about the cadence at we, we, which we put out those equipment. Okay. So make sure that we don't do it too often. Uh, we have a bunch Thank of you. ideas. We have a bunch of cool stuff that we want to put in, and, and of course, we need to be a little bit. <laughs> and even before we you talk exercise about caution. <laughs> Oh, more equipment coming soon. But we're definitely going to assess the ore sources, assess the balance, but it takes time to get the data in, see how people are actually interacting with it, where the pain points are and so on. And that's something very... Uh, like, this is the part I do get. I, I know it sucks. We're, we're all sitting here as the players and we think we have a pretty good idea, but in reality, we probably don't, right? All right, now they're talking about hero equipment. And you're going to find out a few things. I well, found this interesting. I would expect us to relatively quickly get to the point where all the heroes have uh well they now have all the commons that we were mm -hmm. aiming for them to have so there's going to be four commons per, no more commons per he hero and we we're not planning on putting any more in at this time uh we want them all to have a couple of epics and then we'll assess again see how how it works and obviously like people have also been worried what if there's like a hundred equipment for them yeah. it's going to be a mess and, and that that's not the the goal either <laughs> <laughs> okay well firstly good secondly i hope you've started say saving up your starry or if there's going to be 
by the sound of it, there's going to be eight epic equipments eventually. Now, obviously, they'll release them out slowly, but eight epic equipment. Yeah, get time to start saving up that Starry or We are going to be using plenty of it. Now we're skipping ahead a little bit and they're going to talk about game balancing and I think I'll let this play. It's a minute and 25. I'll try not to pause it because it is interesting uh, how he talks about uh, uh, game balancing because it's not easy to do. But it's also, you know, kind of triggering a little bit given that at Town Hall 16, it probably is a little too easy at the moment with the Root Riders. But maybe you disagree. Let's see what Vesa has to say. If you find a thing for the first time what is cool about it is that you know it's more powerful than the thing you got before or maybe it does something completely different you unlock the dragon for the first time and god damn it it flies I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it shoots fire like, why do i want a barbarian when you're there and when you're at that very high level you start understanding that there's a bunch of things you can do with the barbarian that the dragon is not good for and these things start falling into place in this larger collage of of the balance and the meta uh, the problem is that these pieces need to be interesting for the person when they unlock it and they need to s seem juicy in comparison to the other things. But then the end result needs to be balanced for the competitive play. And we come back to this, we need to balance for two, two separate audiences. And uh, we'll, we'll see how we will we'll fix that. Uh, Town Hall 16 is now significantly easier than 15 mm -hmm. was. <laughs> and that was by design because we wanted to wanted to see like if that has a positive effect and it does have a positive effect on some portion of the player base so we want to make it good for everybody <laughs> so yeah. we'll uh we go back to the same uh yeah topic of balancing the game for two different groups exactly and it exactly. is something that's being discussed exactly. internally yeah and how to solve it yeah okay. i can't say when it's ready but it's gonna come perfect there is no way he is referencing anything but a promo that was they're talking about balancing for both. He says he can't say what it is, but it's coming. That is a pro mode. I, uh, you cannot convince me that is anything other than a pro mode. There has been a fair amount of discourse on uh, Twitter. So they are aware that the pros generally want a pro mode. But it's really interesting hearing him talk about, you know, new troops that you bring into the game. They have to be, they have to be either unique uh, slash fun to use or strong otherwise you're not going to change your habits right and that's why the root rider is as strong as it is i think the problem with the root rider is the thing that makes it unique is game breaking uh the walls whereas you had a look at the titan at town hall 15 and that was unique and lots of people used it at the start but a you can base build against the titan uh relatively not easily but you can base build it against the Titan. but b it doesn't walk through walls uh, so it's unique ability of having that aura around it strong, but it's not game breaking. So we'll see what they do in the root right with the root rider in the future. And the last major topic they cover is clan discovery. And obviously I'm not as interested in this because I've got a set clan and, uh, I, if I was going to join a new clan, I'd go through discord or something, but what they talk about here is genuinely interesting. So let's see, uh, let's see what Vesa has to say. Cause his team is working on this. Mm. Global chat had had issues, and the issues come down to. <laughs> I'm sorry to trigger you all out there, but yeah, global chat is not a good thing for this game. It was a great thing for making clans, obviously, but it is, as he's about to say, not safe at all. And yeah, particularly for a children's game, you can't have uh, that sort of thing. Kids these days are generally smarter online, but still, yeah, you can't have it. Trust and safety, and maybe those are. Uh you know, controversial issues and how they should be handled. But uh, the problem that you can't really recruit people into your clan, I think is a fundamental issue. It's, it's, it's one of those things that I think is, is just brutally broken within the game and it's inexcusable. So we're working on it right now. Like it, it is the literal thing that my team is working on at this very moment. You heard it. <laughs> That's cool. So as a sneak peek, we're working on a new clan discovery feature. I hope it's it's going to work well. The idea is that you can advertise your clan. You can find wow. new members for your clan. Like the, the core thing that clans is supposed to be all mm -hmm. about. And I think it's uh, appalling that you need to go to Discord or some other platform to find people into your clan. That That's weird. Uh, although that is also good, like we don't want to, like these things can, can yeah. <laughs> exist in parallel, but it can't be the only way. We need to have something inside the game. After all, we're named Clash of Clans, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, true. That's kind of bad that you get, it's so hard to make a clan in a game. 
called Clash of Clans. And then lo one last thing we're gonna jump to here. Let's go. Back this year or something or yeah this year for sure yeah this yeah. year for yeah. sure okay Absolutely. okay so that's the Review. clan discovery and since we're still talking about clan discovery coming out at some point this year so we've heard a promotes coming uh they didn't put a time on it but i assume it will come this year clan discovery this year uh progression they didn't give a time on neither that did they heroes the oars has kind of already happened in the last update and the equipment will be coming out throughout the year so lots of good things to look forward to for the rest of the year is there anything you think they missed uh if you do have 26 minutes of your time i can't recommend watching this enough it's really cool to hear them talk they're also quite likable um i'm a little bit annoyed I'm though thing that let's go <laughs> how good is his pink hoodie so much better than my pink my pink does not look good at all. It makes my face look even more pink. I want that fluoro pink hoodie. Supercell, if you're watching this, can I please have that fluoro pink hoodie? It looks amazing. But yeah, aside from pink hoodies, um, it's really interesting to watch. They both speak really well. And uh, they're open and honest. And the reason they put this out was to improve communication. And I think this is helping that. But yeah, let us know down in the comments what you think of it, what you'd like to see this year. And uh, if you had a question to ask one of the devs, what would it be?